night of sleep. I fell asleep about 11.30 in my truck in a parking lot of a gas station. And I put a cover up on my windshield and then on my driver's side to, you know, just so people wouldn't be looking in on me while I'm sleeping. That's creepy. 109. I'm definitely in stage four REM sleep. I'm woken up by somebody banging on the window. I finally come to and look out and there's a police officer standing there with a flashlight. I kind of shake my sleep off for a minute, just totally out of it. <clears throat> Roll my window down and he was just trying to see what I was doing. Pretty nice guy, but still woke me up. Got my license, checked me out, checked my vehicle out, said I was good to go. <laughs> Appreciate it. So it's hard to go back to sleep after that. I woke up about four. I'm in a new spot this morning, Massachusetts. I heard a couple gobble yesterday evening around here. I'm not sure exactly where they were at. Let's see if I can't hunt one down. I've heard three gobbles, I think, over on that hillside somewhere. I'm not real sure. The wind is whipping pretty good up there where I was at. I'm kind of just steadily making my way that way. I heard a hen cutting just a minute ago right across this bottom from me. I think there's one more little field in this bottom. I'm trying to get up to it. Get a call. Getting close to this field. It's kind of thick in here. There's a lot of briars. There's an old trail, but it's grown up with briars and crap. My legs are soaked from walking through that field, and I'm not too prideful to wear one of these. It's about a dollar, but worth its weight in gold. I forgot my thermocell. Mosquitoes hadn't been a problem the whole time I've been up here. So I didn't forget it, I just left it. Mosquitoes are pretty bad down in here. I had one drill me on the back of the head, now it's itching pretty good. The sun's slowly hitting the top of that ridge, and I'm thinking as it comes down, kind of starts drying that hillside out, and that sun hits them, they'll go to goblin. Something will. It's me staying optimistic. It's a daggum jungle back there. You don't want to walk through that. So I spent a couple more hours in this spot, hiked a good ways, ran into a mushroom hunter who told me about a strutter he'd seen earlier that morning, about 45 minutes away. So I packed up and headed that way. But on my way to the mushroom hunter's strutter, I found a long beard and a hen on an old logger deck and decided to give it a try. Unfortunately, I bumped this turkey and him and his hen went across the road and I chased him for a while, but then I decided I'd wasted too much time and needed to go try to find the other strutter that I'd initially set out to find. Just found a strutter in this field and there's some hens with him. Finally found the strutter on a last ditch effort. It took me a while. He had a bunch of hens with him. I called while I was looking through my binoculars so I could gauge his reaction. It was not favorable for me. He turned and started the other way.
after I moved and got set up in this spot, the hens were just dragging the gobbler away from me slowly with no response to any of my calling. I'm about to try to crawl out to He's just strutting, kind of fading away. I had to make a decision. Time was running out. The turkey wasn't responding to my calling. And I decided to use the wind to my advantage to get closer for a shot. I was going to try to use the tall patches of grass in the field to see if I could get within gun range. turkeys were steadily moving away from me, but I found that if I used these tall patches of these fern looking things, they provided the perfect cover to get closer. I froze as I saw a hen head pop up. Sometimes you gotta crawl. Unbelievable. Second Massachusetts bird. Thank you, Lord. I know that was documented terribly, but sometimes video don't work. I had had somebody tell me they saw a big gobbler with some hens this morning in a little field, and there's a bunch of other fields around. So I was about to give up. I've got a huge headache. I didn't get much sleep last night. I woke up, went to a spot, didn't do no good, went to another spot. Got on one for a second and bumped him. Man, I was so mad at myself. Um, he was up on a hill and I kept trying to get a little too close to him and he was on top of it and he ended up seeing me. So anyways, I, I made one last little run to a little field up off the road and uh, I eased out there and I saw turkey heads pop up and I backed up and checked it out and uh, it was three or four hens. I don't know if they saw me or what, but they kind of left left the field they were in and I didn't know there was a big field adjacent to it but they came through here and there's a rock wall they crossed the rock wall I said well crap I mean it's like incredibly windy increasing all day you can't hear anything I mean the trees were just blowing over so I said well I'm not giving up it's not 12 o'clock yet I got my stuff and I walked up to where you can come in the top of this field and I was easing out just kind of looking down through here and first thing I see when I kind of get around the corner is 
this guy blowed up full strut facing me. And if you turkey hunted and you've had that happen, you know what kind of feeling that is. And uh, he didn't see me, so I backed up real quick. I set up right up there where I was at, and I said, well, if he's ready, he'll walk up this hill. So I watched from my binoculars and I yelped to him. And uh, he raised his head up, never came out of strut, raised his head up and looked. I yelped again, he looked again. Never gobbled, just kept strutting. And I, it kind of turned away from me a little bit. Okay. I gave him a minute, I watched him, I did it again, he did the same thing. And he's just kind of slowly fading down this hill, I'm following his ends. And so I repositioned, came up to another spot. He was kind of drifting down this, this side here down to this bottom. I knew these hens were out here, but I couldn't see them. He's the only one I could see, mostly his fan. So I stood up behind a big tree and I got in the fork of it and I was watching him and a lot closer there than I was. I was probably, shoot, 80, 80 yards or so from him. I yelped to him and threw it back behind me. He kind of looked and he turned away from me. I said, well, I know what he's doing. So seeing as how windy it was and the entire time I watched him, he never broke strut one time. And a lot of times he was facing away from me. And you got this kind of taller grass out here. I started crawling out through the field. I got, I don't know, maybe halfway to him. And luckily he'd kind of turned and I think came back to me a few steps, but I saw hen head poke up. So I froze, her head went back down. So I took a few more quick crawl steps. I could see him through this stuff. I had a little gap in that stuff. I was looking right across the little crest of the hill and I could see him and he was coming to me. I said, he's in range, he's gotta be. So I got my gun, slowly started raising up. When I did, one of those hens took off running. And that's the first time he broke strut. He took a few quick steps and looked, held his head up. I shot, he went to flopping, so. I don't know how far that shot was. Dang it. Very thankful for the opportunity to get it, come up here and hunt. And, be successful nonetheless so I got two tags left Vermont and today is Friday I got Saturday and Sunday and possibly Monday morning to hunt before I fly back home so we'll see what we can get into I need to get me a hotel room and get a shower if turkeys could smell I wouldn't have a chance I also wanted to bring something to your attention if you've never been to Massachusetts one thing they got a lot of, random cemeteries and rock walls. I don't understand it. These rock walls are in places that are way far away from people's houses and there'll just be some random, just little piece of a wall there. They're like everywhere. I don't know if they just needed something to do with all those rocks or what, but kind of neat. breeze feels nice. I hated it while ago when I was trying to hear a gobble, but turns out I didn't need it. Sometimes you need a little luck in your life. About to get my stuff together, walk over there that truck, put my bird in there, turn the AC on, probably grab me a bite to eat, head to Vermont. I lost a gator, I think I already told you that. Still ain't found my leg gator. I think it's in Vermont still. The bad news is it's a hike to get there. And I lost my good glove, so I have my left-handed glove on my right hand inside, or backwards, I guess. And I had another glove on my left hand because <clears throat> I lost the right hand glove to it yesterday, so. Hey, I'll, I'll lose a gator and a glove if I can kill a turkey. I'm, I'm good with that chain trade.